Now, for maths, we're going to start by looking at something that has something to do with the number 12, as we learned that on Wednesday. And that is a clock. Because how many numbers can you see on the clock? On the face of the clock, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to have a go at looking at telling the time at o'clock and then playing a game with it. So, can you see, if I do this with another thing here, we've got two hands on our clock. Can you see? Now, some people would call them the big hand and the little hand, but we're going to use the proper maths words for them. And what we say is the little red one here, the little hand, we call the our hand. Can you say that? The hour hand and that's because wherever the red hand points it tells you what hour the time is so that's why it's the hour hand and then some people call the green one the big hand but actually its proper name is the minute hand can you say that the minute hand and that's because it tells you how many minutes past or to the time it is so we've got the hour hand and the minute hand. Now, what we're going to talk about is o'clock. I bet you've heard of one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. We start school at nine o'clock. We have lunch near about twelve o'clock. At three o'clock, we get ready to come home. So we're we'll better look at that in school as well at o'clock when we do things at different times of the day. But when it's o'clock. At the moment, my clock here shows one o'clock because the minute hand is pointing straight up to the number 12, right, right to the top of the clock. And the hour hand is pointing to the number one. So it's saying we're in the first hour, hour one. So we say it's one o'clock. And then after an hour... As the, hour, as the minute hand travels all the way around the clock. Can you see that it's going all the way around? When it gets back to the 12 again, can you see? It's on the 12. The hour hand has now moved to the next number, which is the number 2. So now it's 2 o'clock. And then if I move the minute hand again, it goes all the way around the clock. When it gets back to the 12, it means there's an hour of time gone. And then, pointing back to the 12, can you see the hour hand is now pointing to the number 3? So we say it's 3 o'clock. So whenever the minute hand is pointing to the 12, have a look where the hour hand is, and it will tell you what time it is to do with o'clock. So maybe have a look at a clock together, and explore that, and then have a go at playing, what's the time, Mr Wolf? And you could... If you can use your clock, if you can, if you've got a toy one at home, you could set the time to say. So I could, you could shout, "What's the time, Mr. Wolf?" And I could say, "It's six o'clock," and then you could play the game. If you haven't got one, you could always make a paper um, clock, maybe on a paper plate. So you've got your minute hand, hour hand, and when the minute hand points to the twelve, it's o'clock. Have a go at playing that for a bit, and then we'll explore number block number 12 a little bit further. Well, I hope you did okay with the game and finding out about o'clock. Now, we've met a few numbers recently, so number block, which one's this one? Shout it out, it's number block number 10. It's one lot of 10, and it had no other ones with it, did it? So that's why this is 10. We've got one. And then a zero to show that there are no ones, just one lot of ten. And you couldn't just write one for one lot of ten, because then it would say the number one. But then last week, we met a new number block, and number ten made a, a friend a number one. And when they joined together, which number did we get? Shout it out. We got number... 11 and then you can see with the numeral 
that we had our one lot of 10 still. There it is. And then we had our one lot of ones. But this week we met a new one, didn't we? Which number went with number 10 this week to make a new number? Which ones joined together? Can you remember? It was 10 and two. And what number did we get when 10 and two joined together? We got the number, what's this one? It's 10 and two more, 11, 12. 10 and two more makes 12. And we can see that in the number. So we've got our one stick of 10, and now we've got two ones. So one lot of 10 and two ones. So we found and met the number 12. Now, before I do it, can you make number 12 showing me 10 and two more with the Numicon? Have a go, and then let's have a look at it together. Remember to pause while you're doing things. So did you get this? The 10 and two more to make 12. I could put it there if I wanted. So 12 is 10 and two more. If I was going to make 12 on my bead string, so I've got my bead string here, can you, down the camera, down the TV or the tablet, whatever you've got there, can you tell me what I would need to do? Go and shout it at me. What did you come up with? I'd need the 10, and we know that each of the colours are a group of 10, so I've got 10 there, 10 beads, and then what else would I need? I would need two more, wouldn't I? One, two, to show 12, that is 10 and two more. Have a go exploring ways of making 12 with 10 and two, and then what I would like you to do is to find 12 objects that are very similar in size. I'd get them quite small. I'm gonna use my milk bottle top lids because we're better to do it easier with that. Do you reckon you can do that for me? Let's just count together 12 of my lids from this pot. And there are more than 12 in here. So when we get to 12, we need to stop, okay? So let's count them together. So we've got one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, I'm going to leave those in the pot because I don't need them. I've got my twelve. Now, number twelve was pretty funky because they were able to make different arrays. Do you remember that word? Arrays? And that was where you can make different rectangle shapes to show how many groups of different numbers could fit into the number 12. Now if we have a look at this one, can you see I've got them into twos here. How many twos have I got? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can say that six twos makes 12. You can also cheat and do it the other way. You could go one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's one group of six that way. And we've got one group, two groups. We can say two groups of six makes 12. So what I'd like you to do is to see if you can form different arrays so that you've got the same numbers going across to make even patterns like this to see how many ones how many twos how many threes how many fours make 12 how many sixes see what you can find out by arranging your objects into different arrays do you think you could do that thank you puffins